Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for May 31st, 2024. Well, there have been quite a flurry of ominous developments in the last days, and I'll just catch you up on them and then get to some of the questions I received from you. Let's start with the fact that Biden yesterday announced the approval of lifting the restrictions of the use of U.S. weapons provided to Ukraine that they can strike inside Russia. There are a whole series of, of semi-restrictions, but essentially this was pushed by Zelensky, it was pushed by David Cameron of the United Kingdom, uh, then Blinken, and now it's been endorsed by Biden. This is incredibly destabilizing. Uh, it crosses what was once a red line, which was that the U.S. weapons will not be used to strike in Russia. As I said, there are some provisional measures that are attached to it. Those will go out the window just like all the previous red lines. So the, the reality is it's necessary to acknowledge that Ukraine is lost and move to negotiations, but that's not the policy of this administration. Now, secondly, you have the continuing escalation in Gaza by the Israel Defense Forces. Uh, more strikes on civilians and so-called safe zones which actually is making the case for the International Court of Justice that Israel is in violation of their provisional measures against genocide. Uh, and also the International Criminal Court insistence on drafting a warrant for Prime Minister Bet Benjamin Netanyahu. Again, Israel is crossing a red line. Biden said that there must be no assault into Rafa. Now they're, they're moving to come up with a quantification of what's acceptable and what's not. How many dead Palestinian children are acceptable within the red line? That's the insanity of this situation. Uh, then you also have the fact that the Israelis have sealed 14 kilometers of the border with Egypt, the so-called Philadelphia Corridor. And this cuts off more areas where there can be shipments of food crossing into Gaza. And so with the collapse of the pier, the 340 million, is it? $340 million pier to nowhere that, that collapsed because of heavy seas. Well, there's almost no food and emergency aid going into Gaza right now. So once again, a red line is crossed the uh, International Court for Justice said you must provide humanitarian aid, access to aid. That's been cut off. And so we see a continuation of a genocidal policy uh, for ethnic cleansing of Palestine by Israel, backed by the Biden administration. Uh, then we have the conviction of Donald Trump on all 34 counts in, in a New York trial. Uh, we'll have more comment on that later. It's clear that this was aimed to weaken Trump. Typical of Biden's strategy, though, it may actually have strengthened him. Uh, we'll have some comments on this next week. Then you have an ongoing China-Arab States Cooperation Forum in Beijing, which includes Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, Tunisia, uh, Mohammed bin Salman from Saudi Arabia is supposed to be there. And what they're discussing is a ceasefire in Gaza, commitment to establish an independent, sovereign Palestinian state, and cooperation for economic development in the region. This could include bringing the Belt and Road Initiative into the region. It also should put on the agenda the Oasis Plan of Lyndon LaRouche. But the fact that the Chinese are involved in this, and also there's a China-Brazil proposal for a Ukrainian uh, negotiated settlement, uh, and that would be quite significant as opposed to the phony Swiss peace conference that, that's being set up on behalf of Zelensky. Uh, finally, let me happily announce that the independent candidacies of Diane Sayre for U.S. Senate and Jose Vega for U.S. Congress in the 15th Congressional District of New York, which is the Bronx, they filed their petitions yesterday, many, many more than required. And so the two of them will be on the ballot. 
This is significant because they are independent. They're not running as Democrat or Republican. And this gives voters an opportunity to vote for someone who's not part of the corrupt unipolar system. Now, let me get to your questions. The first one came in from, uh, uh, actually from Thailand. Doesn't anyone in the West see the targeting of the Russia early warning sites as dangerous? Well, we do. The Schiller Institute put out a statement, a red alert statement, which uh, will be in the description box below. Circulate it, get it out. It lays out the, the significance of this. Uh, I would say that it's important that we're not alone in raising this. Uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano on his blog has had interviews with Douglas McGregor, Jeffrey Sachs, uh, a new one from Gilbert Doctorow, where they've all been clear on the danger of this kind of targeting. Uh, in contrast, the Washington Post, one of the few story, uh, newspapers that ran this as a story, had a very weak story on it. What they said is that uh, the Washington conveyed to Ukraine the attacks on the Russian early warning systems, quote, could be destabilizing. Well, Washington conveying this to Ukraine, it's probable that Washington was involved in the targeting. So the, the West continues to have a, a completely idiotic view of this. As I said, there are people speaking up. That's very significant. Uh, the, the one thing that was useful in the Washington Post article is that it identified the uh, death of a salesman, Blinken, and NATO officials, including Stoltenberg, as being responsible for calling uh, to, on the lift of the restrictions against Ukraine for targeting Russia. But again, it, it's very weak. What I would suggest is use our statement, the red alert statement, get it around, circulate it, get people moving on this quickly, because this is a life and death situation. If the West starts targeting these, these uh, early warning systems, that's communicating to Russia that soon you should expect a strike. Now, another question that came in, this from someone in Tampa, Florida, uh, why no diplomacy? How come there's no discussion going on between Biden and Putin? Well, this has been a characteristic of the Biden administration. The lack of discussion, of negotiation, uh, whether it's Biden personally or, or other officials, is an absurd rejection of everything we learned from John F. Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. What stopped the world from going to nuclear war in 1962, when the Soviet Union put missiles into Cuba, nuclear missiles, was the back-channel discussions that were initiated by John F. Kennedy through his brother Robert with the Russian embassy, the Soviet embassy in Washington, which then later included a back-channel discussion from Kennedy to Khrushchev directly, and the uh, limited test ban treaty, and a commitment from President Kennedy stated in June 1963 to conduct discussions for a full detente policy with the Soviet Union, in which he said there's no reason to fight. The, these are issues that can be discussed and resolved peacefully. And this is the, the lesson of the Cuba Missile Crisis, which apparently no one around Biden understands today. Instead, it's push, provoke, false flag, keep driving to the, uh, for the intention of weakening Russia, even if it leads to a nuclear war. This is the proof of an insane collapsing empire. Uh, hopefully, there'll be someone else emerging who can move toward negotiations. I don't see it. I don't see any figures, in, including Donald Trump at this point, who are talking about that. I may be wrong about the uh, Trump presidency. I'm not wrong about Biden. Uh, Biden is not going to be the one who will carry this out. So the danger is that you could end up in a nuclear war with no back channel to prevent it. Now, the, the next one, the next question 
uh, I actually anticipated it earlier, about the idiocy of the Gaza pier. It's $320 million for a pier that was supposed to be an alternative to opening up the land routes to provide emergency aid to Gaza. And the person writes a question, why not just open, demand that Israel open the border crossings for aid to Palestine? Well, why not tell the Israelis to stop killing children? Why not tell the Israelis that there are better ways to deal with the Hamas problem than creating more future Hamas members by mowing the lawn, which is the Israeli euphemism for killing Palestinians? Uh, that's what should happen. There should be an end to this uh, fighting, a ceasefire, but then a move toward an independent Palestinian state with a plan for making sure it's economically viable and connected to a mutual benefit policy toward Israel, which would be of strategic importance for peace. And the, the best example we have is Lyndon LaRouche's Oasis plan. If you don't have something like that, you're going to end up with these stupid ideas of building a pier in the ocean which cannot withstand the ocean uh, waves. And as a result, the food and emergency aid to the Palestinians will be cut off. And the consequences of that are more deaths, more starvation, and more spread of disease. So it's another example of the idiocy of the present regime in Washington. Now, the final question is, I, I reported that the campaigns of Diane Serra and Jose Vega filed petitions yesterday to place them on the ballot. Or Diane's running for U.S. Senate, Jose is running for U.S. Congress. So someone asks, what can I do to help Diane and Jose's campaign? Obvious, send money. And I'll be posting a link in the uh, description section where you can have access to their website, where you can read what they're talking about, see videos of what they're doing, and if you wish, you can send a contribution. Now, Jose in particular says that he's running to break down the barriers that silence the people. And one of the things they're, they're planning is a June 6th uh, fundraiser featuring Jimmy Dore, the comedian political analyst uh, who will be there with Jose. And the, uh, the possibility for this is, is enormous. We're seeing a whole group of people around Door uh, and others who are speaking quite seriously about changing the direction of the United States, breaking the policy of the unipolar order, and moving toward a, a new paradigm of security and economic development. So I'd, I'd urge you to go to the websites, do what you can, uh, as I said, also, I'll have the report from the most recent International Peace Coalition meeting that uh, we'll have a report from that. We'll have the red alert statement and then a registration form where you can register for the June 15th, June 16th conference, uh, The World on the Brink. So that's my report for today. Thanks for joining me this week. Share this video as widely as possible. And... Speak to your friends. Don't be afraid of speaking out. This is the moment where individual citizens can make a difference.